Hello and welcome back to another Game Brigade episode. I'm your host, Brian, and you're watching a Kickstarter review of Zero Leader from DVG Game. If you are new to the show, we do reviews, previews, and playthroughs of your favorite games. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. So we're going to be taking a look here at a Kickstarter that I really wanted to cover the last one that they did. Uh, unfortunately, by the time I found out about it and looked it up, it was already too late in their campaign. So I wasn't able to cover it. They've got a new one out. So I wanted to make sure I got an opportunity when it was early in the campaign to make sure my audience knew about it because it might be a game some of you are looking for. In fact, because I, was able to, I wasn't able to do the other one, I did pick up one of their copies here of uh, Warfighter because I really wanted to try their system. I think this company makes an incredible system for gaming. So I wanted to make sure I brought to my attention to my viewers. For some housekeeping, at the end of the video, we're going to talk about the giveaway uh, that we're currently running. So if you are interested in that, make sure you watch till the very end. So let's go ahead and cut on over. Okay, so here we have Zero Leader by DVG Games or Dan Versen Games. And this is a game or a company that does a lot of authentic war simulator-like games. So they're going to be covering infantry. They're going to be covering tanks. They're going to be covering airplane battles. Pretty much anything that you are looking for if you're a military enthusiast or you're looking for a game that's more simulation in terms of the experience that you're getting, these guys have it. In fact, I don't normally like doing this, but let's take a little detour. I brought up their page. Here is their flow chart of what do you want to play? Land, air, sea, and you just kind of follow through. And they're very good at saying like, well, do you want dice? Do you want historical? Like, what are you looking for? And they're going to have something there for you. I think it's really impressive that they have an amazing library. Um, so I wanted to make sure I brought the attention to you guys here on my channel, Game Brigade, because I missed the last one. So they're 20 days to go. They're currently at 368 backers, $37,000 pledged of the $30,000 goal. So I think it's great that they are funded. There's no risk that this campaign uh, won't fund at least. Uh, so, so we're good there. So what is Zero Leader? Well, obviously I haven't played Zero Leader, uh, but I've done a lot of research in some of the other air the air combat games because that was some of the ones that really actually drove me into it. So they have Corsair Leader, they have Hornet Leader, and basically those games are you're going to be taking on um, usually a faction, and they sometimes they have expansion packs for other factions, uh, and then you're going to be having aircraft frames that you can outfit or they're going to be specific pilots and you're going to be running missions. So you're going to have a mission deck. So something like this, this will be your target deck. You're going to select a target. It's going to have, you know, points and like what, how many points you can use to build your, your squad with and whatnot. Um, and you're going to basically pick, do I want, what aces do I want? And, and, um, you know, what kind of stuff do I want to take into into the mission? And you also can choose to fly the campaign, which means if you're choosing to fly specific planes or specific pilots, they're going to get damaged or they're going to get stressed and you're going to need to recover them uh, because they need to rest between missions. So you can't always take the best people. There was a game a long time ago in my PC game days called Rainbow Six. I'm talking like the 1999 version. Uh, where I would always pick the best operators to take with me on every mission. There was really no penalty for ever, you know, for taking Dean Chavez. If you guys ever played that game, he was like the coolest guy. Um, so I don't, I like it when a game of any sort forces you to make a decision on what pilots you're going to take. Cause there are some pilots that are aces or they have a better plane frame and you want to take them on more missions, but the more you take them somewhere, they're going to be um, at more risk of you know becoming damaged, or they just can't take off because you have to make you have to do maintenance on them. And what this game does, it actually has the mechanic built in to reflect that the Japanese didn't have as many pilots, and they don't have as much raw materials to repair and to outfit new planes. So you have to play that balancing game of repairing your units and keeping them refreshed uh, and then if a, if a plane gets shot down you can lose it for for the rest of the campaign i think it's it's really interesting the way it plays out 
in terms of the gameplay, the gameplay aspects. Now, this is very much a dog fighting simulator from what I could tell. So here's a talking about the crew, the maintenance and, you know, giving your guys Saki. And so you're playing. So here's an example of your plane and you're going to do a lot of dog fighting in this. And this looks like a lot of numbers. These ones are added here for showing you some of the new stuff where you have your maneuver, your robustness and your regression. Those are new from other titles. Your maneuver basically refer references how much die bonus you get on your roll when you're trying to perform a specific uh, dog fighting maneuver. Your robustness is how robust is your, your plane in terms of um, is it durable? Is it less durable? So I believe this is a zero. Yeah, and it's not very durable. So that's why it has a negative one robust. But zeros were very maneuverable. So they have the plus one. And the aggression is how aggressive was your pilot, I believe, is what this refers to. And can you push the limits? Can you stretch your pilot out to perform more attacks or something along that matter? Um, and so here's a list of all the pilots that they currently have right now for the Japanese. And so they're obviously going to be fighting against the Americans in this. And so the Americans don't have pilots, but they'll have little, uh, you know, things like cardboard pieces that represents the different types of planes like a... Oh, I wish I knew all the like, um, like a Mustang, like a P-51 Mustang. They'll have something like that to reference the, the American planes. And they also have their own specific stats based on how that airplane was built. And there's going to be bombers and fighters. So you're going to be doing a bunch of different types of combat in this game uh, centered around the, uh, the dog fighting. And I want to see if I can find, because what I thought was the coolest thing, you know, I can't find, I don't know if they have it, but this guy, this video actually, I'm not I don't like doing stuff like this. I like to have it more planned, but they don't quite have the things I want to show you guys here on the uh, well, Unfortunately, we don't have it and I don't want to hear this guy's audio, but what I'm trying to show you here And I can't go full screen. Oh my gosh Well, we're not gonna go full screen. We're not gonna worry about it But what I'm trying to show you is this is the map that you're playing with and so in the center is your target So whatever you selected as your target up here. Well, uh, geez here, this thing. So you'll build your target. That's your target. That's what you're going for. And so you have your map. And this is how the dog fighting plays out is you have your planes down here and they, they approach. These are the opponent's planes. And you see how they're in their sectors and they can move around potentially. Uh, the ones I was watching Hornet leader videos and they had like SAM sites and stuff. Obviously that's not going to exist in World War II. But this is showing an example. And if you're interested in how the dog fighting works, I'm sure this video is a great example of the dog fighting. And then here they have, this is the, uh, the, the chart on the side that talks about how you handle the die rolls. Cause this is a die rolling game. So you're going to roll your dice. You're going to ask, okay, well, how did I do go away? How did I do here on my die roll? How does that reflect in terms of damage? And then each card here will tell you how much damage it requires to kill your stuff. And so these are the maneuvers. If I'm going to do a yo-yo, and then I roll maybe like a five, I get negative one attack on that, on that roll. Okay. And then I, and then I have to roll my damage attack and then I'll see minus my minus one, how much damage I dealt. So in terms of being from what I've seen, and I know you guys are taking a lot of my personal oppression and I haven't played the system yet. Like I haven't played this. I've just got it. I unboxed it. I wanted to do a video of a playthrough of a solo game. Um, but I've got a couple of games that I'm like, I've got a couple of games I have to do videos for, for the, for the channel. So I'm trying to get everything in line. Uh, so it's hard to get as much as I want in as possible. Um, but that is on the docket. And so I know you're taking my impressions of watching other people play this game. But from what I've seen, if you are a person like me, who, who appreciates authentic military uh, experiences. If you, know, if you watch the History Channel or something like that, I think this game is a really, really good you know, purchase in terms of that. I normally cover in these videos, you know, I talk about the game, I talk about the aesthetics, I talk about what about it, um, and I then talk about the the financial value is like, is there a bonus to buying this? Is it worth buying this now? Um, here you're going to be supporting a, a, an indie developer that 
you probably aren't going to find this game at retail very often. You could probably buy it from them at their retail store while supplies last, but there's no guarantee that they're going to keep the stock. So in terms of an option of getting this game now versus later, you're most likely going to need to, to pledge this game. So in terms of value, in terms of resale value, I, I can't in good faith tell you how worth it this $75 pledge is like I, that I normally reference. I wish I could give you an honest answer like, yes, this is valuable. What I can tell you is myself, personally, the system looks really cool. And I really think that not a lot of people are going to get eyes on this campaign because it's a smaller indie developer, especially when you got massive stuff out there going on with Simon Games. So I wanted to at least bring it to your attention. Take a look at their videos. Go back or go on YouTube and, and look for other people that have done uh, videos on their system, you know, Hornet Leader or Corsair Leader. They're really interesting. And I know, I feel like I'm trying to sell you guys. I'm not trying to sell you guys, but I want to, I just feel like I can't give you an honest opinion about the price. $75 is expensive. It is. And if you go down in the shipping, down here, they have a little flow chart of shipping. Do, 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 right here. $20 shipping in the US, 25 looks like Canada. It's pretty expensive. So take a look, determine the value on your, on your own. I know this doesn't help and it's not a part of the way I run my channel normally, um, but I wanted to make sure I at least brought this to your attention. Um, so, so that's it, they have a bunch of different pledge levels here, 90, 100. Again, I don't want to go co cover each one because normally when I cover those in the videos, it's because I'm talking about the value of each one and which one I'd recommend. Here, it's more of a, a flat baseline. Like if you like the system, if it's an if it looks like something you would really enjoy to have in your collection, you can get maybe 10 to 20 playthroughs for, through before you're tired of it. Check to see if it's worth it. You know, do your own analysis. I just really wanted to bring it to your attention here because I, I know not a lot of people know about DVG. They've done a lot of creative games. If you check their creative games, they've they've done a lot of Kickstarters. So they have the history. This is the one that I missed. This was the uh, the Air Leaders expansion. And this, this is what got me interested in Hornet Leader uh, and then Phantom Leader. I was really interested in those. Um, and the reason I picked up this Warfighter one was because it looked, it was the most popular version of ones they've done, it was also one of their first, as you can see right here. So, but you can see, man, they cover everything. 1500s, the Sherman, um, this looks like another airplane one. Corsair, this is Corsair, Zero Leader is very similar to Corsair, but they basically flipped Corsair on its head and, and improved it in a lot of systems. So that's, that's my, um, how do I get out of here? That's my rundown here for Zero Leader. I know this was a much more abstract version of a Kickstarter review that I normally do, uh, but that's because it's hard for me to give you guys a, a, a true valuation of this because I just don't see these games ever in retail. Personally, when I go to my retail stores, I go, I go to quite a few retail stores. I just don't see their stuff. Not to say that it's not out there. It definitely could. Um, I just know that from what I can see, you have to buy it from their web store. So I want to make sure I brought it to your attention. So that's the end of that. We're going to go ahead and cut back to me and we're going to finish and talk about the giveaway that we're currently running. So if you guys are aware, if you saw my last video, we're running a giveaway for Oath Swarm at 3000 subscribers. We currently have a little over 102, I think we're at 102 currently, um, people who have enrolled in the sweepstake so that's great. We have 25 people who have followed me on Instagram. So they have a bonus entry on Instagram and that giveaway will stop at 3000 subscribers. I wanted to announce something and I, and I was debating between doing a separate video and I might do a separate video anyways, just to bring attention to it. But I'll tell you guys now anyways, cause I had planned to the, the, the big announcement that I had regarding the Oathsworn um, giveaway is that we have been given the option or not given the option. We've been given the opportunity to give a second copy away as well. The second copy though is for 5,000 subscribers, which is 
great for us because it's going to help boost our channel up, which I'm so thankful that they, they offer to give us another giveaway. But it's also great for you guys because it's another additional chance to win the copy of Oathsworn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the giveaway running. We're going to go to 3,000 subscribers. We're going to get a winner. And then we're going to just keep it going till 5,000. Um, and we're going to, it's going to be, you know, a, lo a lot of entries on that one is what I'm suspecting, at least 2,000. But at least this first one, you know, it's going to be at minimum 500 plus any bonus, uh, bonus entries they can get there. So if you guys are interested, I'll put a little thing up here for the video where it talks about the giveaway so you can know all the rules. In terms of this video, if you're looking for that bonus entry, make sure you put the word leader somewhere in your comment. Thank you guys again for watching the show. We'll talk to you soon.